Okay, hi everyone. Um, this is just going to be a brief tutorial on how to get a new map started in the Star Wars Battlefront 2 mod tools. So I've just noticed there's a lot of new people on the Game Toast forums who have been asking some questions about how to get started, and there are some really great resources that have been around a long time on how to get started and how to get things set up properly. But I know a lot of people are also visual learners and kinesthetic learners and just like to have a visual reference to help them along as they do it themselves. So I thought I'd create some videos to help people out on that. So right now I'm in the Battlefront 2 Mod Tools directory. I have some of my own maps here already, but I'm going to create a new map just as a demo to showcase the steps that are required to get started. So to start off, you would go to Data, Build, and open Mod Tools Visual Munge. So in here, uh, this is a program that allows us to generate a new world. It's going to create one of these folders for us. Data underscore, and then a three-letter code name for our level. I'm just going to go back here. We'll call this one ABC because that is a classic name for new maps. I'm just going to call this 1111 example map. And we can leave the description the same. Good old Avast. All right, so let's make a conquest mode available to the player and maybe. Uh, to flag capture the flag just so we have a few options and that's really all there is to it to get started right away and you just press create world it wants us to change this so we'll just change it to ABC create world that should take just a few moments depending on how fast your computer is all right, so then it's all done. We can close this now. And if we go back to the BF2 mod tools folder, we'll find a data underscore ABC folder there. So this contains everything that'll be included in our mod. Okay, right now it's just a template, so it's uh, fairly blank. Uh, it's got some standard items in it that uh, are necessary for most of the game modes. So before we do anything else at all, we want to go to build, which is in our main data ABC folder. And here we find another mod tools visual munge program. Now this is specific to data ABC. The one that we went to before is just a general mod tools visual munge program that is for creating new worlds. It's just a template program. If we open this up, we can see that the top half of the program is grayed out because we're not able to create a new world with this version of the application. And now the bottom half has become avail available to us. So we see here that we can munge, which is basically the uh, term for compile. We can munge the world ABC, which is ours. We can munge some sides. I'll come back to that another time. And we've got all these other options here as well. I'll touch briefly on these. So common is typically content that you would find in your data ABC common folder. It includes some standard items uh, related to the HUD and the game interface. Localization, which is uh, basically telling the game what to write out as names for certain things. It contains some standard meshes and ODFs, which are property files, and I'll have more on that later. And just some scripts, including the script for ABC. So these are the scripts here for the Conquest game mode, the Capture the Flag game mode. And you can see it's got C for Clone Wars and G for Galactic Civil War here. And we'll come back and go into that in a little more detail later back to the munge program. There's a shell checkbox. You can actually make modifications to the shell, which is the game interface. 
load. And this isn't functional by itself. There is um, a fix for it on the gametoast.com uh, forums and a great tutorial on how to make load screens. Localize, this is uh, already included in common. You can definitely check it if you want to just really make sure that your localize is munged. Sound, pretty self-explanatory. The sound items are found in the sound folder. By default, the Battlefront 2 mod tools weren't shipped with the content that you need to be able to uh, include custom sound. But there are plenty of great fixes on the GameToast.com forums that you can use and that uh, allow you to modify music and sound effects and voiceovers in the game. Movies is um, a checkbox that's not used very often. You can create custom movies as part of your mod, similar to the videos that would be shown in between the campaign missions in the stock game. And over here we have a couple of other checkboxes. Audio streams are part of sound, but if you are munging or compiling just audio streams which include music, you'd want to check that. And sound only is something that you would check if you only wanted to do sound and not your world, not any of these other items. For now we don't need to worry too much about most of these. But the first time that we munge, and this step that I'm doing right now is fairly important just to make sure that your mod tools work okay, is just select all and you'll see that it will automatically select all of this except for sound only because obviously we're selecting all of it and not only sound. And it'll select every side. And we just want to hit munge This will just take a few minutes. Okay, so I just skipped ahead there because it does take a few minutes to uh, complete the first munge because it has to go through absolutely everything and compile it. So we get this message, all done, go run Battlefront 2. We will probably also get quite a few errors and warnings. 99 times out of 100 uh, on your first munge, there should be absolutely nothing uh, that's actually a problem here. These sound errors are completely normal. And this one shell error, input file shell.rect does not exist, continuing, one error, that's totally fine. So we can close that and just ignore it. All right, so I'm gonna close this now. Move that. And I'll just open the mod tools application. I'll come back to this uh, application and how it works in just a moment. So let's just play Conquest, Galactic Civil War, and launch. And it'll just load it up really quickly for us. Okay, we'll play this the Empire. Let's be a scout trooper. And we're in. So this is what the default map looks like right after your first lunge. Very flat, just has the default Yavin 4 textures. And sky. And completely stock, completely untouched sides. Your map is just in a diamond shape. And we've seen everything we need to see at this point. The map works, our sides are there. So that's a good start. Okay, so maybe we want to um, add some props into the map. Or, say, change how the map is shaped. The layout of the command posts. So what we want to do is open zero editor. This is the map editor. Now you might get this error, runtime error, zero editor.exe, and it'll just shut down. 
Now in my case, I, I have a fix for it. Again, this can be found on the gametoast.com forums. There are quite a few different uh, ways of getting around it. Some work for some people, uh, some of them don't work. There's many different ways of getting around it, and sometimes absolutely none of them work. Uh, it all depends on your machine, and of course the operating system, Windows 8, uh, has something to do with it. I believe it affects uh, anything Windows, Vista, or newer. So here's the mission editor, zero mission editor. And what we can do is load a file. And let me just navigate to the place we want to be. So you want to go to data ABC worlds, ABC world one. And this file here, abc.wld is the world file for our map. We click it and it brings up this load layers menu. You can leave everything here um, the same. And I'll touch on layers really briefly in just a moment. So it loads everything up and we get this very strange view. The controls are a bit odd for a zero editor. WASD will move you around. And then to rotate your view, you use the arrow keys by default. So I'm spinning right now and you can tilt up or down and that's basically it you just fly around and there's also the option if you press tab your mouse will disappear and you can change to mouse control for the tilt and rotation of your camera so that way you can just fly around uh, with WASD and use the mouse controls so it's handy for some things most of the time I just use the arrow keys because that's what I'm used to so here we are, this is our map. One of the things I like to do with the default map right away, just because it's so dark and difficult to see things, is um, just go to the top and click Regions. And this is in the Show section. And now these little cylinders will show up. There should be four of them for Conquest mode and then two smaller ones for Capture the Flag. These are capture regions, and I'll go over those in a moment here. Just to touch on layers briefly, you can see active layer is base. The base layer is going to contain pretty much everything for your map. So it's going to contain the terrain, and it will contain most of your objects. So for example, houses, trees, ramps, buildings, and just most of your props. If we go to the change layer button, you'll see this little window comes up here again. And you can see we have a conquest layer and a CTF layer. These layers are game mode specific and contain game mode specific items. So the conquest layer, if we click it, our active layer is now conquest. And the terrain is still there, that's great. But if we go to object, and this shows us we can we can edit our objects in this mode. We now have a list of objects that are present in the conquest layer. We have CP1, CP2, CP3, and CP4. So these are command posts, as you may have guessed. When I click CP1, it should highlight command post 1. And in fact, it's kind of hard to see, but it is right there. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. So you can kind of see why I want to have my regions enabled just to see better. Now, it, maybe some people won't want to do this. That's just a personal preference. It makes it easier to pinpoint where my CPs, which are quite small, uh, are located. So here it is. The top, you can see the little uh, tooltip that pops up next to my mouse. The top field there is, as you can see, CP1. That's the name of the object. And the second one is the object type or class and it's com building control zone so control zone you can see all four of our CPs are this type of object and so that means that they have a certain number of properties that are the same they have a capture region that needs to be defined control region spawn path so you see that CP2 has the same list of properties Okay. 
So just looking at conquest <clears throat> briefly, uh, as you know, in conquest mode, you have to run around and capture these CPs or defend them from the enemy team. So the CP is the object, and it has these properties. Now you can see the first property is capture region. What that is, is a region in which uh, if a player is standing in that region, they can make the enemy team lose control of the command post and then start taking the command post to uh, capture it for their own team. And we can check this out by going to the region tab, edit mode, region. And now we can select the region. You can see when I hover over it, it highlights and I click it. And now I've selected it. Now this region, you can see the ID is CP1 underscore capture. The class properties are CP1 underscore capture. So that's the name and property of this CP. The property essentially defines what it does. And for capture regions, that's what it does. It just does CP1 capture. So hopefully this makes sense so far. CP1, the capture region for it, is CP1 capture. So that's this region here. So obviously, if somebody walks into this region, CP1 is going to start being captured. Control regions are related to vehicles, and they can be quite large. What they do is allow vehicles to spawn inside of that region in connection with that CP. So this is helpful for, say, a space map where you have the command post for, say, the Republic, and then have a large control region inside of the hangar inside of which all of the different types of vehicles will spawn and you can fly them out of there. And this is um, more obvious with land maps where the uh, vehicles, where the command posts rather, can be captured because the control region is going to change which kinds of vehicles uh, will spawn depending on which team has the command post. So it may be a speeder bike if the Republic has, say, this CP1. But as soon as the CIS captures it, those speeder bikes are going to disappear. And perhaps a stop will spawn there, which is a CIS vehicle. So that's just a brief note on control regions. And spawn path is the third sort of important whoops, piece. Um, in the CP's properties. So to find a spawn path, we would just go to the edit mode path. And you can see all these funny little uh, nodes will appear. So if I hover over this one here next to CP1, we can see that this path is called CP1 underscore spawn. So right here, CP1 spawn. Each of these nodes represents a point at which a player on team one can spawn. So if somebody is spawning at CP1, they can spawn maybe here or here or here or here. Same with the AI. The AI who are chosen to spawn at CP1 can be created here, 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 or here. And they will be facing the direction of the green axis. So if they were spawning, they would be facing this direction. All right, so we can see the name is CP1 spawn. Let's go back to object and select CP1, CP1 spawn. And uh, the starting condition of the command post is uh, team one. So that's the Republic by default. So right away, this command post is going to belong to the Republic. The Republic can spawn there. If there's a control zone with vehicle spawns, then those vehicles can spawn as well for the Republic. If we go to CP2, which is over here, we see that it's Team 2. So right away at the beginning of the game, it's going to belong to the CIS. You can actually change this to Team 0, which would mean that it starts off as a neutral command post that can be captured by either team at the beginning of the map. 
So that pretty well covers the conquest side of things. CTF uh, is pretty simple as well, but I won't cover it right now. Just um, let's make a simple modification. Let's click on CP3 and let's set it to team zero right away. So it's gonna start off as a neutral command post. And we'll go to the opposite one here. Select CP4. Let's make that team zero as well. So we're gonna start off with Republic spawning at this CP, number one, and the CIS spawning here. And then they're gonna have to fight over these two command posts in the middle. Just as a very simple modification. Now let's head back to the base layer. Let's make some height modifications because frankly a flat map does not look like a lot of fun. So we have these tools here in the height edit mode. Paint, spray, raise, and blend. Paint allows us to set a foreground or background height, so the default height is zero. We can maybe say 10, and this is measured in meters, I believe. And if we go to paint and we left click, left click is for foreground, right click is for background. Let's click on that spot there. Now that spot's been raised to 10 meters. Now there's not a whole lot of smoothing there. But if we select that same area and we've got our background set to zero and we just right click, then it goes back to being flat. I could set this to 10 and just take a corner here and right click and just that corner gets indented back to zero. So I'm gonna flatten the whole thing again. All right. You can use the pick tool as well. Let's say I uh, do this and later on I've set this to maybe 20 <clears throat> and I set that to 20 and I'm not too happy with that so I'd like to actually change that back to 10 what I do is go pick and if I left click it will change my foreground height to whatever that is so it's changed it back to 10 for me or if I right click it'll set the background to that but I want my background to be zero so I'm gonna click on just the flat ground we can exit the pick tool let's go to paint and let's just paint 10. As you can see, if I zoom in here, it's a pretty sharp incline. So that's what the blend tool is for. Now, if we take an area, I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller here. It's currently four by four grid units. I'm gonna make it two by two. And blend, is exactly the way it sounds. It just smooths things out for us a little bit. Makes it a little nicer to look at and also in some cases makes it possible to actually walk up the hill. Yeah, okay. All right, so now we've got this rise here just in the middle between those two command posts. Do a little more smoothing. And that's a pretty shallow angle, so it should be possible for units to walk up there if they want to. Okay, so we've got a hill. And uh, let's see, what else do I wanna do? Let's keep things symmetrical. So add, add a hill just over here as well. All right, and blend that really quickly. Now this is important as well. The pressure tool changes basically how quickly or how hard it will try to do something. So 20 is pretty good for a lot of things, but maybe I want to do some really quick blending. I'm going to change it to 60, and you can see it moves a lot more quickly now. So let's just give that a quick blend around the edges there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got two hills in there. Another quick point that I'll touch on just in this uh, here is the uh, texture editing. Don't worry about color editing, that is not important at this point. Uh, it doesn't, as you might think, it change the color of the terrain. It's important for um, lighting and the, the shading of the terrain, but 99% um, of the time you really don't want to touch it or worry about it at all.
All right, so let's change the um, terrain texture. Now it doesn't quite work in the sense that I can pick this grassy green texture and just paint over this. You can see I'm painting and nothing's happening because it works in layers. So we've got this brick texture here as well and that seems to be layered on top, this one here. So I can actually erase that by just holding right click and dragging across. So I've erased that brick texture now. gone. Yeah, and we've got a different brick texture here. That's this one. Okay, maybe I want to put some of the big brick texture on top of that. I can just click and since the layer is above the smaller brick texture, it'll just paint right onto it. So that's the paint mode. That's pretty much the main one you'll need. You can be a little more gentle by using the spray tool. Let's maybe just spray a little bit on here. And as you can see, if you look really closely, very faint brick marks are appearing. So this works like an airbrush. Just gently uh, paints that on and you can take it off by right clicking with the airbrush. Very nice for creating some uh, extra detail. And there's the blend tool here as well. So blending, uh, let's say I've got the small brick texture and it's on the edge of, um, no, let's blend the large one actually. So that'll be here. And if I click blend and just hold it down, you can see it's kind of disappearing and blending with the smaller stone texture there. So it's similar to erasing with the spray brush. It basically just changes the opacity of that texture. You can create some really nice effects with this if you um, pay attention to the details. All right, so there are many other tabs here um, that do various things. I won't touch on those at this point because they aren't a necessity, but we'll just give this a save. Just save it in ABC World 1 as abc.world, save, replace it, and you're done. So let's close this. Right, and now that we've made those changes, let's go back to Data ABC Build, Mod Tools Visual Munge. And since we've only changed the world, and the world munges by default, as you can see, it's selected there, we actually don't need common to be munged. That'll just take up extra time. So if you, nothing is selected at all, no size, nothing at all, only your world will munge. Unless you've selected sound only and sound in which case only your sound will munge. That's the only way to stop your world from munging is to select sound only and munch sound. So let's just munch that really quickly. Takes a few seconds. Done. So now let's have a look at our changes. Okay, so here's the example map. Let's go to Conquest. Uh, let's try Clone Wars this time. loading all right republic and as you can see our change to the command post worked so we've just got the one for the republic one for cis and then the two neutral command posts spawn and we can see one hill there one hill there all right and now while it's still not a very interesting map layout. We've still got the diamond shape and uh, you know a lot of lot of flat space wide open. Uh, it's a definitely um, an improvement from the default layout. So we've made some basic changes to our map. One other point that I'll just touch on really quickly here before we finish up is how to add objects into your map because obviously you can't do everything with the terrain settings. So to add objects, here's what we have to do. Let's go to our data ABC, worlds, ABC. And in here where we have the world one folder, we want to create a new folder. We'll call it ODF, that's what it has to be called. And then another new one called mesh, MSH. The mesh folder is going to contain the actual models and textures 
for the objects that we're going to be placing. And the ODF, as I alluded to earlier, contains property files for those objects, defining what they are and how they behave. Now, if we want to add some objects that have already been made and are part of the stock assets, then we would just go to our Star Wars Battlefront 2 mod tools base folder and go to assets, worlds. Let's maybe add some content from, oh, Kashik. Okay, so to start off, let's copy some ODFs. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail with this process, but I will give you the basic information that you need. Let's take um, just some rocks, maybe some large rocks. So cas2 prop rock L definitely sounds like it's a large rock. So I've got notepad++ here for editing my ODF files. You might just have basic uh, notepad, that's fine. What we need now is to make a note of the geometry name because we're gonna have to dig that out of the mesh folder. So here we can see it's called cas2 prop rock L dot mesh. Okay, I'm going to close that. First things first, I'm just going to copy this to my desktop. And now let's go into the Kashik mesh folder. So do we remember what it was called? It was called cas2 prop rock L. There it is. All right, so let's copy that to our desktop as well. And it's important to make sure you get the right um, texture file as well. Now there's many ways you can check this. Uh, I have a hex editor called XVI32. Um, but you can just use a text editor like Notepad as well. And all you need to do is just find where it references a .targa file because those are the texture files used by Battlefront 2. And right away here we can see it's there. cas 2 prop rock .targa. So we can close that. And it's right there. Copy to desktop. It doesn't look like we need the low res rock texture at this point. It's not part of this model. So now that we've taken those, let's head back to the Battlefront 2 Mod Tools folder. Go to ABC, Worlds, ABC. And now we put the .mesh file and the .targa texture into mesh. And the .odf file obviously goes to ODF. So just to run you through this really quickly, this is the ODF file, it's the properties file. So when we open it and have a look at it, it has this information, class label equals prop. So that means that the game is going to treat this as a prop. There's also building, destructible building, um, and many, many other types. Um, props don't do anything, they're not destructible, they don't have health, they just sit there. Then we have geometry name that defines what mesh we're using and then go down to properties and then this again defines geometry name. Uh, it is important to have both of these here. Geometry name equals this. So that's all it does in this case. It says it's a prop so it just sits there and does nothing and here's what it looks like. So I'll close that again and we'll minimize that. And then in mesh we have the actual mesh and then the texture that the mesh will be using. Okay, so now if we want to edit that, edit the map to include that prop, we load up zero editor, go to ABC, load everything. And I'm just gonna find my command posts again. It's very easy to get lost on this big terrain. Another thing I'll note right now, if you're thinking of making a big map that takes up the entire square of terrain, don't do it unless you have a really, really good reason and uh, maybe you're making a 
vehicle only map or something like that. 99 times out of 100, it's a bad idea. All right, so here's our fighting area. The reason, uh, another reason that I like to show the regions is it just really helps me get a sense for where the units are going to be running around because obviously we don't want to bother putting a rock over here. Nobody's going to go over there. So now we just go to object. We're still in the base layer because we're placing props. So these are not specific to any game mode. ODF, gas2, prop, rock L, and we open it. So now we're in object select mode. We've got the ODF file. And if we go to place, aha, uh -huh, look at that. Okay, now there's a little bit of artifacting going on here. Um, not entirely sure what that's about. I will double check once we've placed it, but it's fine. We uh, we can at least place it in zero editor and we can fix that before we go in game. So let's put a rock here, um, maybe here for some cover around that command post and here as well. All right, so now we've got one, two, three, four rocks. They've all been given names, prop rock L rock L1, 2, 3, but they all have the same ODF, which is prop rock L. And you can rename these if you want as well. Let's maybe take this one here and we can call it big rock. Oh, sorry, I tried to edit the wrong thing and I screwed everything up. Okay, let's go here. Go to name, which is the proper field and go and just call it big rock. That's embarrassing. Okay, yeah, big rock, there we are. So it's got the name, but it's still a uh, rock L. All right. Now sometimes, uh, just to touch on this white blank texture here, uh, sometimes this just happens in Zero Editor for unknown reasons, um, but uh, sometimes it does happen because you've just forgotten to copy over the correct texture. And since we're in here anyway, uh, I may as well touch on barriers, which are important to make your AI not look like idiots. Because a human player can see a rock and knows that they have to go uh, around it. AI don't know that. They just know, here's where I'm spawning, here's the command post I want to capture, and they'll run and they'll try and get through the rock and it doesn't work so well and they look like idiots. So if we go to the barrier tab here, it brings up this. So. We're in the new barrier mode, and all you have to do is click. Let's. We want to create a barrier around the rock. Barriers are useful for AI. They provide the AI with a region in which they should not try to uh, move through at the region. So, an AI traveling between these two command posts will not try to walk through the rock. They'll see the barrier, um, and they'll go, "Okay, can't go there," and they'll try and go around it. So I'll just create one very loosely around it. You click and just let go and it'll give you this line. And this is the first axis of the barrier. Let go say here and then it gives you the second axis. So you want to drag it so it'll take the entire rock so there's no chance the AI will try to go through any part of that rock. Okay and I'll just do another one here really quickly. Uh, another one here just really loosely because it's not too important in this case. All right, lots of room for them to go around, obviously. And for this map type, you know, it's wide open. So you might think, oh, well, what if an AI tries to go way out here? Well, they won't because the conquest objective is for them to capture these command posts. So in general, they'll kind of stay in this region here that I'm circling with my mouse. If you wanted to, um, say try and keep them very tightly within this area you could create a barrier like this and like that like that and you could really confine them to um, to this area you could even cut in here if you wanted So this is just to demonstrate what barriers do and how they can really help you. These can be used in conjunction with planning, which is another thing I'll touch on later. But for now, we can just save. Yeah, and we'll close. I'm just gonna really quickly try and figure out what's going on with 
not texture. So I'm going to go to worlds, ABC, mesh. I'm just going to go back into my rock mesh here and see if there's maybe a target I did miss. Yep, so I was wrong about the low res rock texture. Apparently it does get used. I'm just going to find Targa and yeah, so there's only the two textures that are used. So I'm just going to go to the assets folder really quickly again here. Don't worry about following me. You already know roughly where to go. Prop, rock, low res, copy, and the ABC, worlds, ABC, mesh, paste it there. Okay, and so we don't have to go back into zero editor to refresh it and see that the rock texture is working. You can if you want, but it works just fine to go back and munge that. So again, we haven't changed any scripts or sides. We're just gonna deselect that, munge the world. You can see it's getting our rock props in there and we close it. I'll just load up the game really quickly here to show you. And load the example map, Conquest, Clone Wars. Okay, and let's play as the Republic. Spawn. And we've got our rocks. Now we didn't play with the positioning at all, so they're just kind of floating there right now, and it doesn't look very nice. But you'll notice nobody's going around that hill because we've got those barriers that make the AI cut right into the middle of the map. So that's worked as well, and I don't see any AI getting stuck on the rocks either. So everything seems fine in that, uh, in that way. And I think that'll pretty much do it for that tutorial. Uh, so you now know how to create a new map, how to get it set up for modifying things, how to make some basic adjustments to command posts and to the terrain, and how to add props in. So that should be enough to get you started. Uh, I do have a side modification tutorial, uh, just a very basic one up as well, so you can look at that if you'd like. If you have any questions about Battlefront modding, head to gametoast.com forums. Make sure you read the rules uh, and read the frequently asked questions thread because that has a ton of information for new modders in it. And if you have any questions, just ask away. Thanks for watching.